Liaquat Ahmed, born November 14, 1952, in Kenya, is an American author. Topic: Life and work. Ahmed has worked at the World Bank in Washington, D.C., where he headed the bank's investment division, and at the New York-based partnership of Fisher, Francis Trees & Watts, a fixed-income business and subsidiary of BNP Paribas, where he served as chief investment officer and from 2001 to 2004 as chief executive. From October 2007 he has been a director of Aspen Insurance Holdings and in addition advises several hedge funds, including Rock Creek Group and the Rahatan Group. He is a member of Board of Trustees at the Brookings Institution and is involved with the New America Foundation. Ahmed was born in Kenya, where his grandfather had emigrated to from Gujarat by way of Zanzibar in the late 19th century. He was educated at rugby school in England, at Trinity College, Cambridge, and at Harvard University. Through his production company, Red Wine Pictures, Ahmed was a producer on the 2006 film The Situation. Set in Iraq, Ahmed comes from the Nazari Ismaili Shia sect, but describes himself as a non practicing Muslim and comes from the Ismaili community. Ahmed's wife Mina is active with Medicine Sans Frontiers and other charitable enterprises. His son-in-law is actor Jonathan Tucker. Topic: Lords of Finance. Ahmed is the author of Lords of Finance: The Bankers Who Broke the World, 2009. The book was awarded the 2010 Pulitzer Prize for History, the 2010 Spears Book Award Financial History Book of the Year, the 2010 Arthur Ross Book Award Gold Medal, the 2009 Financial Times and Goldman Sachs Business Book of the Year Award. For 2009 it was recognized as one of Time Magazine's Best Books of the Year, New York Times' Best Books of the Year, and Amazon.com's Best Books of the Year. It was shortlisted for the Samuel Johnson Prize. It is published by Penguin Books, USA, Inc. ISBN 978-1-59420-182-0. The book narrates the events preceding the Black Tuesday stock market crash of 1929 and the disastrous response of the world's major central banks. It follows the life and actions of the then chiefs of the central banks, Benjamin Strong Jr. of the New York Federal Reserve, Montague Norman of the Bank of England, Emile Moreau of the Bank de France, and Hallmar Schacht of the Reichsbank. John Maynard Keynes, a British well-known economist of the time appears on many occasions in the book in a role opposing the central bankers. The main theme of the book is the role played by the central bankers' insistence to adhere to the gold standard even in the face of total catastrophe. In June 2012, Ahmed himself drew a similar parallel in a Financial Times column, saying that, during the past few months, as the crisis in Europe has spiraled out of control, he had begun to fear that the world might in fact be repeating some of the same errors as those made in the 1920s and 1930s. While the 21st century central bankers and banks were starkly different from their 19th century predecessors, Ahmed said that, as they experiment with unconventional monetary tools to get the global economy moving, ironically they may find their years of training less useful than their instincts. SOME of the same intractable factors that their predecessors of the 1930s had to contend with will overwhelm them once again. Today's bankers fear. France, Ahmed pointed out, was the strongest economy and financial system in 1930s Europe, while Germany was reeling. And like Germany seemingly in 2012, France in the 1930s could not find a way to use its strength to help its neighbor. Ahmed in June 2012 concluded with a question, if, over the next few months, a financial accident takes place in Europe, as is likely, is there any European institution willing and able to act as fast and with such vigor as the 2008, Lehman bankruptcy-era U.S. Fed and Treasury, to prevent a disaster? <laughs> 